It's a great privilege to be here today speaking to you all. I personally have learned lots from former conferences and so it's really um, quite an honour to be speaking to you all today about a topic that I'm really passionate about. Um, I, as a cancer doctor, am dealing with these common questions from my patients on a daily basis and really wanted to take you through and bring you up to date on the evidence for a lifestyle approach to preventing and surviving cancer. And uh, as you have probably heard from my biography, I'm really passionate about using plant-based dietary approach um, as part of this overall lifestyle medicine um, uh, techniques for improving survival after a diagnosis of cancer. And so you'll probably find me coming back to um, the piece around diet frequently during this talk. So, um, You've heard a little bit about me and my websites are here at the bottom, plantbasedhealthprofessionals.com and plantbasedhealthonline.com. Um, the healthcare service is really for UK residents and will provide you with the support you need from qualified healthcare professionals who are using a lifestyle medicine approach. Um, and um, just to say that I have been vegan since 2013 for all the reasons that we know um, veganism is um, good for the animals, for personal health and for planetary health. Um, I treat people with lymphoma um, and I have written a little bit about the impact of um, diet on the risk of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. This is freely available at this website, um, www.ijdrp.org, which is the International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention. Um, but I won't really be talking much about lymphoma today because it's quite a rare cancer and I'll be sticking to the data on common cancers. So what I hope to cover today is the role of nutrition and lifestyle habits for cancer prevention and discuss the impact of nutrition and lifestyle approaches for improving quality of life and survival after a cancer diagnosis. And even 90 minutes doesn't seem enough because the wealth of evidence is now enormous and hopefully you'll all find some take home messages by the end. Um, so I usually focus these types of talks around the questions that my patients ask me, and most of them ask the same sorts of questions. Is this something I did? Is it genetic? Is there anything I can do to improve my chances? And what about supplements? I have to apologise slightly. I've got a very vocal dog in the background, and I'm not sure I can do very much about that. So um, hopefully it's not too disturbing. Um, so. The global burden of cancer is a big problem for everybody. Cancer is the second leading cause of death globally, with one in six deaths caused by cancer. In some countries like the UK and Canada and, and even the US, cancer now is the leading cause of, of death. So one in two people born after around 1960 will develop cancer in their lifetime. And the commonest sites of cancer are lung, breast, prostate and colorectal cancer. At most, our genes contribute to around 10% of cases of all cancer. And most international organisations clearly state that 40% of cases could be prevented by adopting healthy lifestyle habits. So what are these healthy lifestyle habits? Well, you can see them here. The Cancer Research UK um, here in the UK has great infographics that you can share amongst your friends and colleagues. Um, but here you can see um, the lifestyle factors that currently are causing four out of 10 cancers. So tobacco smoking, we know about, but it's still a global problem. Carrying too much weight is now the second commonest cause of cancer after tobacco smoking. Not eating enough fruits and vegetables, unsafe exposure to the sun, alcohol consumption, and I will be coming down strongly against alcohol consumption a bit later in the talk, and not doing enough physical activity. Just homing in on diet, we have um, a great analysis from 2019 published in The Lancet, which looked at dietary risk factors in 195 countries. And what it showed was that around a million cancer deaths a year were due to a poor diet. 
And in addition, not only were we limiting our life expectancy, we were losing healthy lives. So 20 million years of healthy life are lost due to an unhealthy diet, which is resulting in increased risk of cancer. And the reason our diets are so unhealthy is because they're too high in sodium, which is a reflection of our consumption of pre-prepared and packaged foods. But there's just not enough fiber. We all know that fiber is only found in fruits and vegetables and healthy plant foods like whole grains and legumes. We're not eating enough of these healthy plant foods. And in contrast, we're eating too much in the way of animal derived foods, particularly red and processed meat. And a reminder, in case any of you haven't heard already, that back in 2015, the WHO classified processed red meats as a group one carcinogen. It causes cancer. And red meat as a group 2A carcinogen, it probably causes cancer. Um, and you can see this infographic on the right. Um, and this was mainly in relation to colorectal cancer, but actually we know that red and processed meat consumption increases the risk of a number of cancers, including breast cancer, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, esophageal cancer. And a really interesting study was published in Nature just a few weeks ago, um, and this was looking at causes of death in um, post-mortems of over 100,000 animals, um, mammalian animals, um, that had died, unfortunately, in the context of being in a zoo. Um, and when the um, researchers looked at the animals that um, died of cancer or had um, cancer most frequently, what they concluded, and this is a quote from the paper, we show that cancer mortality is associated with diet, with carnivorous mammals facing the highest cancer related mortality. And we're no different, you know, we have known for a while, several decades, in fact, that as our meat consumption has increased, we have an increased risk of cancer as, as human animals. The authors of this paper make um, various hypotheses about why this would be, and it might be that um, meat consumption exposes animals to viruses, we know it exposes us to environmental pollutants, it clearly doesn't have the protective dietary factors like fiber, but in contrast has um, dietary nutrients that adversely affect health such as saturated fat, and diets low in fiber, high in saturated fat negatively impact our gut microbiome. And this is exactly what we have found in human studies. Um, and it's just worth thinking about the degree of risk there is with the consumption of particularly processed um, red meat and unprocessed red meat. Um, again, a nice infographic here from the Cancer Research UK. You know, people often talk about, um, you know, red meat is the new tobacco. Um, and to some extent, that's that's true because the strength of evidence supporting processed red meat as a cause of cancer is just as strong as the strength of evidence supporting tobacco smoking as a cause of lung cancer and various other cancers. However, I, the risk is smaller. Um, so whereas 86% of cases of lung cancer are caused by tobacco smoking, around 20% of cancers of the bowel are caused by the consumption of red and processed meat. Now that's not to say that this is not an important cause of cancer. Of course it is. And, you know, in the UK alone, a population of about 66 million, we could have eight and a half fewer cases, eight and a half thousand fewer cases of bowel cancer if we all stop eating processed and red meat. When it comes to the US, because I assume quite a lot of the audience today are based in the US, um, this analysis, from, again, published in 2019, showed that around 80,000 new cases of cancer are estimated to be due to um, the consumption of a poor quality, unhealthy diet, as I say, which is represented by being too high in processed foods and too high in meat and not enough whole plant foods, with a lot of that risk um, uh, due to uh, the rise in colorectal cancer. And just focusing in on colorectal cancer, because it is one of our most preventable cancers, more than half of cases could be prevented if we ate enough fiber, if we did not eat red and processed meat, and if we were not carrying too much weight. Um, so this is a huge impact we can um, make just on um, addressing diet and lifestyle factors.
When it comes to breast cancer, again, there's a significant pre preventable um, proportion. Around a quarter of cases could be prevented if we didn't carry excess weight, we did not drink alcohol and um, you know, exposure to radiation, difficult to control for, but obesity, dietary factors and alcohol are the main causes there. And just to come back to um, the issue of overweight and obesity, clearly a motive factor and there isn't um, one underlying cause of carrying too much weight. We know that there are over a hundred different factors that contribute to our body weight. Um, but unfortunately, um, the prevalence of overweight and obesity is increasing globally, and it is a direct cause of a number of cancers, 13 different types of, of cancers that you can see listed here on the left. Some of our commonest cancers, um, such as breast and bowel cancer, and some of our rarer, more difficult to treat, such as pancreatic cancer. And why is this? It's because, you know, the fact that we carry in us under our skin and around our organs, which is called visceral fat, um, isn't just sat there being inert. It's an active tissue. It um, creates inflammation around the body. Um, it secretes proteins um, that then lead to inflammation. It secretes hormones such as estrogen that then drive um, female cancers. And it also um, secretes uh, growth factors such as insulin and insulin-like growth factors, which again, um, signal to cells to grow and divide and ultimately become a cancer. And with all the um, sort of westernized diet, carrying too much weight, smoking, um, alcohol consumption, there is a rise in certain subtypes of cancer, particularly colorectal cancer, and the age is getting younger and younger. The most rapid rise in cases in, is in people under the age of 50. Now, we clearly don't understand all the causes um, of, of this change in, in statistics, but um, it's happened in a time frame that's far too short for it to just be related to changes in our genes, because that takes a much long, much longer. And so it's proposed to be due to changes in our lifestyle, particularly an unhealthy diet that's then causing an unhealthy gut microbiome and also um, our sedentary lifestyle as well. Mm -hmm.